When the Fertitas and Dana White took over, <laughs> yeah. explain to me the dynamic. You're the voice of the UFC MMA. Yep. I'm gonna say MMA in general, because we really fell in love with MMA because of UFC. So you're the voice of MMA. What is the dynamic for you as a person dealing with them, dealing with the organization? What was the landscape of UFC? Really give me a behind the curtain look. We went to this dinner. All of the SEG employees who were gonna be brought over to Zufa, we went to this dinner in Vegas, Italian restaurant, shocking, back room, the whole bit. We knew that Frank and Lorenzo had financial backing, we'll say it the nice way, that they were rich as fuck. <laughs> and all the vision and everything they shared at the table that night, I'm telling you, Bear, and you got to live it, and I got to live it, was we're gonna turn this into something special. We're gonna make this mainstream. We're gonna embrace regulation, which goes back to my Mark Ratner. So Big John writes the unified rules of MMA. Jeff Blatnick, Olympic gold medalist, also a cancer survivor, before he had cancer, he had cancer before the 84 games, survived, and then won gold in Los mm -hmm. Angeles in the 84 Olympic games as a heavyweight. And then you bring Mark Ratner into a room and you start talking to these state athletic commissions and literally, they're going, if Mark Ratner says this is okay, this guy's the straightest shooter ever, this is okay. Oh, wow. So that was, that was a real key. That was, a re that was Lorenzo's first, is that by embracing regulation, we were also going to establish a set of rules which allowed us to get back on cable immediately. Wow. Because that was the big thing with Senator McCain. You could not get pay-per-views on cable during the dark days. Yeah, you were pulled off a cable. So you could only get it if you had direct TV. Now, now people think, oh, everybody. No, not everybody had direct TV. There were about 15% of the Americans who had direct TV. So you couldn't even make the choice yourself. You couldn't get the pay-per-view. And I've always said Canada saved the UFC because they, they were buying it still. They, they didn't have those same restrictions with the pay-per-view. Wow. So Lorenzo changed that. And then, I mean, we'll eventually get to it, but the ultimate fighter was, was a way to get true legitimacy to show that these aren't thugs, to show that they're mm -hmm. athletes, that they put in the work and everything. And I mean, to have Chuck and Randy be the first coaches, like who else would be the first coaches? It was mm -hmm. perfect. Um, not as entertaining as Rashad and Q, but you know, <laughs> it's a that's black that's on black crime. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Come on, Rashad, you're not saying that. Come on, Rashad. <laughs> Come on, Rashad, you're not saying that. No, you know, you're not doing that. <laughs> Rampage and Rashad probably have the highest viewed Ultimate Fighter season of all time. No question, without a doubt. No question. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know who the fighters were on that season. The guy put chickens in Rashad's car. Like you got to be a, a crazy <laughs> maniac to put live chickens in someone's car. That was all Tiki's idea. You know oh no, really? No, yeah, I did. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> hey, well, the Senator McCain. What well, what was his problem though? Why did he come out the UFC so hard though? It wasn't the UFC. It, it was just the sport that was really, it really was. It, was, it wasn't it was you against Rashad mm. or me against Bear. It was your style of fighting. It, wasn't, it really wasn't mixed martial arts yet. You're right, yeah. It was like, which martial art is superior? Is it wrestling? Is it Muay Thai? Is it jiu-jitsu? Is it ground and pound? Is it, you know, submission fighting? What, what is it? You know, is it pancreas? Remember the dude who came out with one boxing glove back at like oh, yeah, 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 He yeah, just yeah. passed away. Yeah. What, oh, what? man, rest yeah, in yeah, peace. Yeah, I think he just passed away. No way. Yeah, because he had fought, um, uh, man, how am I going to forget this? We just we just talked about this, remember? Because he came out with the one glove and Hoist Gracie, I think he fought Hoist Gracie with yep, one glove, yep. and Hoist Gracie was saying, I had never understood it because, you know, yeah, it's because then he, he just, had nothing. But that guy just passed away? Yeah, no passed way, because yeah. I met him. You know, I'm bad with time. Maybe a, couple, a year or two ago. Really? Yeah, he was the nicest guy. The coolest thing was when we had the UFC 200, a lot of those guys were around with, you know, the conventions Jimerson. and the conference. Yeah. Jimerson. Yep. yep. Mm. Yeah. And um, he had one glove on. And yeah. it was 30 years later or whatever it was, yeah. or 20 years later, and he's walking around getting autographs, and he's got the one glove. Yeah. And it was a glove from, yeah. like, not even a good sporting goods store. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was the worst glove ever. Yeah, we, but it was cool because it was his uniform, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had Tank on the Tank on the show, and Tank was telling us he made the glove, and then we had Tito on the show, and Tito was saying he made the glove, and then we we're trying to figure out, all right, well, who made the actual UFC gloves? Because everybody's everybody has their own version of who made the glove. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, who yeah. do you think made the first UFC glove? In your opinion, do you remember? 
Do you know? No, but but by the time I was in at Ultimate Japan, they had the UFC gloves. Oh, they did? The MMA gloves. And you didn't really watch it before all that, huh? No, no. I was a hockey announcer. I I mean, I had just gotten to ESPN. I had just spent six years as a sideline reporter with the Bulls. So wow. Michael's first three championships. The Last Dance, I lived the first seven episodes of The Last Dance. This is the coolest thing ever to see. To see them at that time get past the Pistons, the bad boys, mm. and then Michael win the three, and then Michael went to play baseball, and I went to ESPN. Mm. I came back, went in the locker room to see Pax and, and all, you know, all my, them, my guys I got to cover, and Mike goes, hey, what are you doing now? I go, I'm doing play-by-play play for ESPN. He goes, I always knew you were too good for that sideline stuff. <laughs> and I was like, fast forward to Wolf of Wall Street. Can you say that again? Yeah. Just a little bit slower and clearer. Like, that's one of my, I still get chills. Like, yeah. Michael Jordan said that. I'm like, holy crap. For real? Yeah. That's I swear to God, that's wow. what he said to me. 